Welcome back, it's Thursday and that means acting analysis and today we're going to talk about True Detective Season 1. I was a big fan of Season 1, not so much Season 2, there were some good parts here and there, but I really really like Season 1 and today we're going to talk about this specific scene. You're going to have a link in the description to the separate upload that shows the whole thing and I'm going to go straight into the pieces that I liked. So as we have the scene, it's already awesome in terms of body language, how you have hands in pockets, these guys, the heads tilted. It's already telling us how much they are enjoying being here. There's something about opening a scene and having your character already in a specific pose that tells us something about their state of mind, their emotional place. So when you start your shot, be really mindful of how is my character pose. In a previous movie that I uploaded, I talked about body posture, how you can have a specific posture that gives us a certain inclination of how the character thinks and everything that you need to be mindful of when you start your shot. So it's not just your T pose, arms down, and then you just kind of move the character. Make sure that the character in its rest pose is already in character, so to speak. So for them, this is already awesome. I love that relationship here already. But you know, they're still friendly, they shake hands. He seems to be the most open, arms out. There's something somewhat inviting about this. These guys <laughs> do not care whatsoever. They're here because they have to. But what I liked about this is here, this interaction. So you have him holding food and you know, they're looking at the characters and whatever they're doing here. And I love this. This exchange is fantastic, exactly this frame. He is passing over food. He just looks at the food because it's kind of in his peripheral vision. He will grab it and then that's it. But the cool thing is that he doesn't look at him. He doesn't look at him. And to me, this implies a certain relationship where this is not the first time they've done this. They're partners, they work together. He might give him food every Thursday or every day. There's just something, some routine that they have. And he comes in, here's your food. Oh yeah, here's my food. And just that gesture and the lack of eye contact to me implies history. So there's more to those characters than just they're here, eye contact talking and kind of going through their their one, two, three steps of these are my acting moments that I got to deliver this dialogue. There's just something to it. It's an interesting thing you can add to your shots where you can imply more interest in the scene. You can have more interest between the characters. There's more relationship stuff between them and you can expand the scope of the shot, the scope of your character and your character relationships without adding too much. So again, I'm a big fan of head accents and, and head darts, you know, looks and but also eye contact. And that to me is, is a really cool moment of here's the food. Oh yeah, thanks. It's just some casual, I wouldn't say ritual, but just something that they're used to and it's just a routine that they have. They continue to, <laughs> sorry, this guy just cracks me up. They keep talking, they have their business here. He keeps him up to date on what happens. And this is another section here that I love. A, I like how you have him looking over here, it's very clear to the yarns. We got to look over here. He stops his movement. There's more movement here. And he does just enough leaning to reveal this. It's an interesting staging with him in the middle there. But I love what he goes, uh huh, and drops that. He could just take this paper and go, oh, okay, they're here, or mm, okay, slide it. But there's just some flippance type of, really? Mm hmm. That's why they're here. Okay, uh huh. So that, just that kind of that arc out and the kind of the kind of throw of the paper. Every move that you do, every gesture with the hand, every eye dart, every eye closing, whatever you do, just think of it not in terms of movement, I have to go from A to B, but think about, well, if I move this quickly or if I move my head slowly or quickly, every single frame, the timing of every move will tell us something about the character and how he or she feels, how their relationship is between the characters, what they think about this moment, how they react to a certain moment, just like in this case, how he reacts to that piece of information, which also reminds me of a cool little moment in Cameron Fielding's clip where you have an off-screen character with the newspaper kind of doing that flip, that whoosh, and it's such a cool little moment. It's nice animation. The timing is really neat. And again, just adds something to the shot. That's just interest and cool showcase of timing. To me, it's always something where you have your main character and do your awesome animation, awesome acting. 
and then you can add in, you can kind of sneak in high polish, some interesting timing without making it the centerpiece. It's like when someone has a tie and looks around uh, and the tie is moving. Or in this clip by Guillermo, where you have the nun playing, not playing, but kind of, you know, she's kind of nervous and she plays with that prop and it's a prop that fits the character. It's something that she would have but it's really well animated. The polish is really good, and to me, it's not distracting, but you can kind of show off your detail animation skills with something that supports the character, that's just something that's part of the shot. And I like those little details. Now, I usually spend too much time on this where it gets kind of, I go off on a tangent and animate that way too much, just like in this shot where I animated something a long time ago from Pitch Black, and the, the bird flies through and there's all this stuff flying around. I have way too much fun animating this stuff. I highly recommend that you do this at the very end, that you don't do this at the beginning. I kind of get distracted and do this kind of in the middle instead of just as kind of a flourish. So keep it as kind of an add-on. And it's a cool, simple little move, but still it tells us something about how the character feels. And it's all through the timing of how am I doing this arc, hold out and then come back. How quickly is this newspaper dropping down? It's not very complex in terms of mechanics and complexities and constraints and all kind of stuff, but it still tells us something about the character. Then we move on to this here where he goes on and on, tells him what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He agrees and disagrees. And the cool thing is, this is a simple detail, but again, it's something that can expand your shot where it's not just this scene with this character and it's empty, it's a good composition, it's kind of in your thirds and everything has a little set that's cool but what i like about this here is actually this character in the back and you don't even need to have her in the previous shot if you just have a single shot that's this you can still have a hand coming in and they talk in this scene but they don't really have to it could just be a hand comes in coffee or whatever it is beer tea chocolates i mean it could be whatever right but it's an additional detail where your character can say something and can perform, and while he or she performs, oh, thanks, grabs this and continues. It's just additional business that to me is just interesting secondary action. There's going to be a whole FNA about secondary action where I'm just a big fan of characters doing something where it's not just for the sake of doing, but like they're doing something that's part of their routine, their daily life. They're not in a vacuum, like the, you know that Matrix scene where they're just empty and they're just presenting some performance to the camera. They're going about something in the kitchen or they're folding laundry or they're in the office grabbing things or in this case, talking to someone and oh, thanks for the coffee. It just adds life to me. It adds like, more to the world, not just a simple character in an empty room. There's just more to the scene. Interesting handoff that you can show in terms of animation, detail work in the fingers, in the posing, how he holds this cup. It could just be this, it could be something delicate, it could be this and go, and then because kind of that because it's hot. So again, you can show off whatever like little character details based on a prop. I would just add a prop just for the sake of adding a prop. But I think in this case, it could be a cool little detail. So he continues, same thing here in terms of eye lines. He really is not a fan of this whole relationship and those other cops asking him for things. He could just get up, lean forward, give him this folder. You know, it could be maybe like here and then they, he waits for the other person to reach forward and hands it off. But no, he just kind of throws it, but without looking. So if you look at this scene, you can see how he just throws it, looks somewhere else, no eye contact. He just disconnects from those characters. He completely disrespects them. He doesn't care what they do. <laughs> His head tilt couldn't be further. He's going to start falling over, leaning over. But you can see uh, yeah, yeah, they're not very happy about this. But I just love that little moment. Again, it's all about eyeline. There's so much you can do with you staring at a character. You're kind of kind of looking away. There's something that I'm going to post in the future about ER. There's the Dr. Benton. He has this thing where he constantly looks away. He's never able to hold focus. He has no eye contact. He just either he's either nervous or he's embarrassed or he's just not comfortable. Or most of the times he's just kind of always thinking ahead or always of something else. He's never there and invested in the characters that he talks to. That's a different um, act analysis movie for a later point. But in this case, again, eye contact, awesome here. And then you got this little moment here where he has that, yeah, it makes you feel like real cops. It's a little, whatever, potentially inappropriate um, gesture you can interpret, maybe, who knows? Again, doesn't really care about them, makes fun of them. But what I like about this is that it's, 
It's a gesture that's off screen. And one of the traps in animation is that you want everything to be very clean, real nice silhouette. Now I'm not saying don't do it. It shouldn't be confusing. It shouldn't be a crappy silhouette. At the same time, not everything has to be all super clean in there. And I'm a fan of performances where the character is just in character. They just perform and you just happen to frame it this way in a close up and a full body and you just capture a gesture or not. And obviously if it's an important gesture that's off screen and the audience misses the point, then that's not well done. But there's just something where you can have gestures that are off screen. You can still kind of get what's going on. You still understand the main action, the main intent in the way it's framed. Just like in this scene from um, Warrior with Tom Hardy doing this, this pointing gesture off screen. So he does this type of thing, but it's it's off screen, but you can tell by the movement of the arm, how he takes the body, how he takes his head. There's something going on. And you can kind of guess he's probably doing something like that. You're not missing out when you don't see it, but it still adds something to the performance where you don't just have everything still because that's how we frame it. So to me, I would always kind of look at what would be the natural performance. Even when you shoot reference, act it out, act it out the way you would do it, gesture or not. Well, it's kind of the natural feeling for the scene. And then you look at your framing. I mean, you would kind of act it out based on a, a framing that you chose beforehand, but sometimes you kind of change the camera as you animate potentially. But I would look at what's a natural performance. If you need something very specific with something holding to camera or very specific acting moment with whatever you have, obviously frame it correctly. But there are moments where you can just do a gesture off screen and then it's okay when you just have the the intent through that gesture but it's still off screen right it doesn't it doesn't really you don't really miss anything when you don't see it then after this is probably one of my favorite things he is done with this conversation he turns around and he turns his back towards them he completely disconnects like i am done with this and they have this moment of this leaning like okay yeah that's it but they don't leave right away. They, they stare at him like, I can't believe he's such a turd. And what I love about this is A, just this, there's no audio. He just does this full on acting with his body. Like I'm done with you. But then I love this. He doesn't quite completely sit down. I mean, he does sit, but it's not a complete settle. Sits and holds and then he waits. And, he, and again, there's no real eye contact. He just looks here and it's kind of a look of, why are you still here? I'm looking back and going, sitting there going, Really? It's not this, would you please go? It's kind of like, why are you still here? Okay, now I'm done. It's that type of thing. And I love that in the scene where you can see it again here, sits down a bit, holds, and then he moves forward. Then he's done, which of course everybody notices and he is even more ticked off and the scene continues. So this sequence is not that long, but there's so many good things in there in terms of eye contact. When do you have it? Do you have it or not? Do you stare? Do you blink? Do you have interaction with other characters on screen or off screen? Do you have a natural performance that just happens to be framed like this, but you still do some gesturing that's off screen, but it's just a bit more natural that you just happen to capture like this. And then looks and gestures or behaviors or passing along props, just things you can show when you have two characters without actual dialogue. You don't, you can just imply your relationship by how they hand things off or how they look at each other or don't look or whatever you can imagine for your characters. There's something that you can always add that's outside of your audio. Again, you've heard this probably many times if you watch all of my clips that I'm a big fan of adding acting choices outside of when the dialogue happens. So you have more control so you can add your creativity to your shots. There's more in this first season. There's another clip that I want to show later on, but that's it for now. Again, there's a link in the description if you want to watch the whole thing without any narration from me. If you like this, hit the like button. If you want to see more and be alerted by all the uploads, hit subscribe and hit the bell button. And as always, if you watch this whole thing until the very end, thank you very much and I will see you tomorrow for an FNA if you watch FNAs. Otherwise, see you next week.